Hi everybody. One question that I sometimes get asked is how many covariates should I include in my model? And the answer to that will obviously depend upon your sample size. Uh, and there are various rules of thumb out there for, for different applications. But for occupancy models what I tend to suggest is around about a minimum of, of 30 observations per covariate. Now that may seem like quite a lot, uh, and it is in some degree, but you have to remember that with occupancy models we only have you know, zeros and ones. Um, there's not a lot of variation there, and covariates are there to explain variation in your data. So I suggest you want to have at least sort of you know, 30 um, observations per covariate that you're trying to include in a, in a model. Now what exactly an observation is uh, depends upon whether we're talking about uh, the occupancy component or detection component of a model. Uh, so certainly that's a, an additional consideration. Uh, another consideration is that it also depends upon whether our probabilities of interest tend to be fairly you know, low, like close to zero or perhaps close to one. Uh, because again, when you're in those situations, there's not a lot of variation in the data to explain. It's either you know, predominantly zeros or predominantly ones. So your required sample size will actually you know, also perhaps um, depend a little bit on the actual values of those probabilities as well. Now if you start putting too many covariates in a model, there are a few things that tend to happen which can give you a bit of a warning. Uh, one thing is that you might start getting some, some non-numeric uh, results in your estimates, or the, particularly the, perhaps the standard errors. Um, so sometimes when using software like, like program presence, um, when you have too many parameters or too many covariates in a model, then it can't estimate the standard errors very well, and you might have some warnings or, or errors there. Another sign that things might be going uh, a little bit wrong is that your estimated effect si sizes may suddenly change. Um, so as you add in an additional covariate, uh, all of a sudden, perhaps the, the estimates for the other covariates that you already had in the model, those numbers are, are suddenly different. Um, another sort of, uh, another um, indication that you have something wrong is that your estimated probabilities come out at essentially zero or one. Um, in that situation, what the, the model thinks is happening is that we've found sort of the perfect model. We can completely separate our data out into places where the species is present or absent uh, with, with certainty. And, you know, that's a situation where I'd probably sort of think that, well, maybe not. Um, you know, models are just an approximation of what's really out there um, to claim that we've found that the perfect result uh, with perhaps a relatively low sample size might just be, a, you know, it's, it's probably a spurious result uh, rather than anything else. So there you have it. I hope you found that useful. Uh, so my suggestion is that in terms of how many covariates you want to include in the model, uh, you want to probably have 30 observations for every covariate. And there's also another other, a number of other considerations to keep in mind as well. Uh, and one of them is also about the, the linearity of covariates when we put them in if they're continuous covariates. So, and also things like you know, what the overall probability is as well. There you go. Hope you found that useful. Uh, until next time. See ya.